Uh, welcome everyone to this multi concert uh, renewable energy webinar. And today's topic is uh, technical challenges in future power systems with less inertia and the high penetration of renewable energy sources. And here I will focus on the renewable energy sources that are interface to the power system uh, via power electronic converters. Um, and so my name is Lester Kalemba. I work with the uh, section for electric power systems uh, within the renewable energy department. Um, I hold a PhD uh, from uh, NTNU in Trondheim um, in electric power uh, systems. So with those few remarks, uh, let's get started. Um, <clears throat> I've structured this uh, presentation um, in several sections. I'll start with an introduction uh, just to set the tone for the for this presentation and then uh, <clears throat> i'll try to uh, highlight the main drivers uh, for the changes that uh, are expected in the future power systems and also i'll try to paint a picture on how the future power system will look like <clears throat> and then i'll move on to uh, highlighting the trends the global trends uh, in renewable energy um, highlighting the investment uh, landscape uh, if you like. And then I'll focus on the impacts um, of renewable energy sources that are interface the system uh, through power electronic converters. Um, I'll talk a bit more about the some of the challenges that are expected and also uh, what measures could be taken uh, to address these challenges. And finally, I'll give uh, a recap of the, the main points. So, um, renewable energy sources are expected to uh, dominate uh, power systems as the penetration levels uh, is increasing at an alarming rate. And this is uh, mostly in uh, solar PV and also the uh, wind power generation. And because of this, uh, utilities around the world are already discussing and conducting feasibility studies uh, regarding uh, the possibility of 100% uh, renewable energy based power systems. Um, and there is also a uh, general consensus that uh, uh, technical challenges uh, may be a hindrance uh, to seamless integration of renewable, renewables in the future. So, yeah, like I've already mentioned, I'll try to discuss some of these challenges uh, in this presentation. Uh, the main drivers uh, for, for changes in uh, power systems that are expected in the future are uh, mainly threefold. Um, the first one is the climate policy, which has uh, brought about uh, several emission reduction targets in <coughs> uh, different countries. And also the need for energy security. Uh, and so most countries are moving uh, uh, towards uh, Securing the energy volume from energy, renewable energy sources. Um, and thirdly, uh, of course, uh, the need to sustain economic uh, development uh, across uh, many countries. <clears throat> and so, how will the future power system look like? Or how will this, this power system look like in future? Uh, there will be more and more uh, biotonic interface uh, generation. And uh, this involves uh, both uh, solar and uh, wind power, which have uh, intermittent uh, supply. And this will be connected to the, both the transmission system and the distribution network. Um, mostly uh, large scale uh, wind farms are connected to the transmission system and uh, solar PV is mostly connected to the distribution network. And so there'll be more and more of this um, if you look at the figure here, you can see that there will be more solar uh, connected uh, through power train converters and also more wind farms. And of course, there will be less and less uh, 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 conventional generators, uh, such as uh, nuclear power plants, which uh, are expected to be decommissioned in, in the future. And there will be more and more electronics in terms of uh, HBDC links uh, between countries. 
Uh, and as the technology develops uh, or matures, there'll be more and more storage, um, which will be interfaced to the system uh, through bioelectronics. More loads, dynamic loads uh, in terms of, for example, um, electric vehicles, and more with the, the possibility to actually inject uh, active power into the grid. And of course, uh, uh, market integration will be, will be a huge consideration, considering that uh, many countries are already moving towards uh, a common market uh, across uh, several countries. And also, there is already there are some studies uh, regarding uh, uh, multi-terminal DC grids. So we have uh, there are several uh, possibilities here. Um, with that, I would like to just highlight some of the global trends uh, in terms of renewable energies. And in this slide, I show uh, that uh, the investments in uh, in Europe uh, for wind power generation are uh, expected to exceed uh, for, for 400 uh, gigawatts uh, by 2030. Um, this will be more than three times uh, the investment levels in uh, 2014. And even a, a more uh, pessimistic uh, scenario shows that uh, actually this the, the level of investment, the installed capacity from wind uh, Power plants will exceed uh, uh, twice the investment levels in, in 2014. So, a lot of uh, wind power production uh, is expected uh, in the near future. Um, <clears throat> there are similar developments in terms of also uh, PV solar uh, production. And so, already um, it's expected that. Uh, the next uh, three years or so, that is by 2021, the uh, <coughs> stored capacity from uh, solar PV will exceed uh, one terawatt. And this mainly is due to the fact that uh, the prices for the solar PV have been uh, dropping uh, um, quite uh, progressively over the years. And Already, utility scale solar is, is, is cheaper than uh, uh, combined cycle gas turbines and uh, production from coal and also nuclear power plants. I think it's in the it's the, the, the price now is downwards of uh, 10 cents, US cents per kilowatt hour. <coughs> yeah, so just uh, some more highlights. Um, and this is uh, looking at the Nordic region in terms of HVDC links. We, we can see that already there are uh, several projects for which an investment decision has been reached. Uh, and so this, these are supposed to, or expected to come online uh, by 2021. And this is in excess of uh, 4,000 megawatt capacity. But there are several other projects uh, for which an investment decision has not been reached. So the bottom line is that there'll be more and more uh, power, uh, SVDC power converters uh, in the system. Um, and so with that uh, uh, introduction, if you like, I would like to uh, focus on the impacts of renewable energy uh, power plants uh, in the power system. And in this figure, um, I show on the vertical axis here, uh, for example, if you have to carry out uh, studies of the impacts, then the area that is relevant for the impact studies and on the uh, horizontal axis, uh, this is the, the, the time scale that, that should be considered. But uh, in terms of uh, the impacts, impacts uh, generally, they, they, they can be local impacts or they can uh, affect a wide uh, area of the system. And so uh, in terms of the local impacts, uh, the concerns mostly are uh, to do with the voltage management uh, due to the variability of supply. There are positive impacts and also uh, challenges. But also we could uh, look at the distribution efficiency in terms of uh, uh, loss management. 
and also the power quality uh, regarding uh, harmonics. But on a system level, uh, we can uh, look at the impacts uh, with regard to, for example, grid stability, uh, which could be uh, reserves, uh, that is the generation and load balance. Or we could also look at the transmission uh, efficiency and uh, congestion uh, management. But also, uh, it's possible to actually quantify the uh, emissions reduction due to high penetration of renewable energies. And so with this, I, I would like to uh, talk a bit more about uh, some of these impacts and, uh, and challenges. Uh, in terms of voltage management, uh, there can be positive impacts, and uh, this could be due to additional reactive power support from uh, renewable energy uh, sources. And this could improve the voltage profile, for instance, in the distribution network. And also, uh, the voltage profile could generally uh, improve if, for example, the uh, renewable energy the plants uh, are able to offload uh, the major transmission lines. Um, but then uh, there are also challenges, uh, mainly to do with the, the variability of variations in the, in the supply uh, from renewables, from solar or, or wind power production. And so you can have over voltages and under voltages um, at the point of connection of the renewable uh, sources. And this can lead to, lead to over voltages or under voltages, which, um, and the converters may, may trip, uh, thereby we may actually lose the, uh, the support, for example, for example, the active power support that uh, uh, <clears throat> we could possibly get from uh, renewable energies. Um, and the other issue is that uh, reactive power uh, support uh, in general may be inadequate with the high penetration of renewable energies because um, most of the uh, small uh, scale renewable energy power plants are designed uh, to operate at unity power factor. So that is, they're not able to inject any reactive power into the system. And so in general, there could be a reduced uh, voltage stability margins um, because of this. And also the other aspect uh, that is uh, more and more difficult uh, with the uh, small scale uh, renewables is that uh, well, they are not able to satisfy the, uh, the four drive through uh, capabilities or requirements that are uh, stipulated in the network codes. So these are the main issues here uh, regarding uh, voltage management. And now I would also like to talk a bit more uh, about um, the impact on power flows. Uh, and here, um, the first aspect I would like to uh, discuss is the, by the issue of um, bidirectional power flows, that is the, uh, because of the uh, active power injection into the system, let's say for a power plant connected to the distribution system. Um, so when the uh, PV generation is larger than the, the load in the, that area, uh, there could be actually a power flowing into the transmission system. And this can lead to um, complexity in setting uh, of the uh, voltage control uh, devices, uh, such as uh, tap changes, for example. And uh, we may need uh, modifications of the existing protection schemes uh, in terms of uh, having relays that are able to detect or deal with the uh, direction of flow. Um, and so because of the impact of uh, uh, this uh, renewable energy generation on uh, power flows, Actually, uh, we could have uh, increased or reduced uh, uh, power losses on the lines. But this depends on the network configuration and, of course, the point of uh, connection. So these are the main issues 
with regard to the impact on power flows. Uh, and also just to highlight here, uh, uh, power quality will be, will be an issue uh, with regard to, for example, harmonics or voltage swells. Um, and increased harmonic distortion uh, can result in uh, parallel and serious resonance. Uh, this could lead to overheating in capacitor banks and uh, other equipment such as power transformers. And also uh, protective devices uh, uh, can maloperate or malfunction. And so it will be a challenge to um, actually uh, manage the, these the distortions so as to satisfy the allowable uh, total harmonic distortions uh, stipulated in the network codes or, or the standards. Uh, so additional investments uh, may be required. Um, in the figure, uh, I just show that uh, it is actually possible to quantify these uh, uh, harmonic distortions, and this was just for a small power plant, but the, the the distortions were way below the um, the thresholds, so this 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 was okay. Um, I'd now like to focus on a, a very important topic, and that is uh, a grid stability. And so, <clears throat> just a, a short uh, description of uh, what power system stability actually is. Um, so uh, power system in general is the ability of the, the power system uh, to maintain a, an operating equilibrium uh, following uh, disturbances. But uh, there are several uh, categories or categorizations of uh, power system stability. Uh, and this could be based on, for example, the physical nature of a disturbance or the main system parameter that is uh, affected. And so we could, uh, uh, for instance, talk about what is stability, uh, which is the ability of the system to maintain uh, steady state voltages following uh, disturbances. Uh, and like I've already discussed uh, in an earlier slide, um, the voltage management is affected by uh, renewable energy uh, sources. And so uh, this could lead to, for instance, a rapid, uh, 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 let's say, uh, rapid uh, disconnections of the equipment uh, leading to low voltages uh, or deterioration of voltage at uh, main bus pass uh, within a short uh, period of time. The other aspect uh, is, also, is frequency stability. And uh, in a nutshell, this is the ability of the system to maintain uh, frequency uh, within allowable uh, limits following a disturbance. This could be a loss of a power plant or a fault on a transmission line or loss of a, a major load. And so it's about the balance between generation and end load. And also the other aspect of power system stability is uh, rotor angle stability, uh, which uh, actually is the ability of the power system uh, uh, to maintain synchronism. That is for all the machines connected in the system to be in, uh, in synchronizing with each other. And so this is uh, about uh, establishing a top balance uh, among uh, synchronized uh, machines. And uh, two aspects of, of this uh, type of stability uh, can be further discussed, and that is a small signal stability or stability in the small, and also transient stability. Uh, I'll get back to these uh, aspects uh, in a moment. And so um, with regard to rotor angle stability, the main issue uh, of high penetration of renewable energy sources is the reduced inertia due to uh, displacement of uh, conventional generators. And by displacement here, uh, I mean that uh, uh, some conventional units uh, may need to be switched off uh, because then you're able to get a power a balance uh, from uh, renewable energy uh, generation. 
And this affects both the small signal stability and the transient stability. Um, and as, as I will discuss later, the available uh, inertia will affect both the frequency of oscillation and also the first swing stability. Uh, we'll talk about this uh, more. Um, in the figure here, um, I just uh, want to show that actually in a study done for the Irish system uh, by Stigre, uh, it, it was shown that actually with a, an increasing uh, penetration of uh, wind power generation into the Irish system, uh, there was generally a reduction in the inertia uh, or the kinetic energy that is uh, that was available in the system. This was for different uh, uh, operating uh, scenarios. So the bottom line is that uh, with an, a high penetration of uh, renewables, uh, the inertia uh, it reduces significantly. Um, and so a bit more about uh, transient uh, angle stability, which is the ability of the power system uh, to maintain synchronism uh, following uh, large disturbances. For instance, loss of a, loss of a power uh, generation unit, and so on and so forth. Um, so in a study done in a PhD thesis, actually, um, at uh, TU Deft in, uh, Den in Denmark or Netherlands. So, <laughs> um, the, it was found out that uh, uh, the impacts on the uh, transient st angle stability are technology dependent. For example, uh, the impact of renewables is uh, positive or it enhances transient stability. Uh, if, for instance, uh, the PV or wind uh, generation sources are able to ride through faults and therefore provide uh, uh, fast uh, uh, voltage support to the, to the system. And also the impact is uh, location dependent. Uh, for example, if the unit or if the renewable energy units are located close to uh, conventional Synchronous generators, the uh, transient stability of the system is expected to, to improve. And also, um, of course, this depends on uh, the impact, uh, depends on the preferred operating point. So if you have a system which is, which has, uh, uh, which is operating at uh, a very, uh, let's say, low level uh, loads, then the transient stability will be better than a system which is there, which is stressed. And so the penetration level of the uh, renewable energy power plants affects uh, the transient stability. And uh, with moderate penetration, it was found actually that uh, uh, decreased uh, loading uh, of conventional power plants uh, could be could result into transit uh, stability, better transit stability response. Um, and also, if if the loading of transmission lines uh, is reduced due to the high penetration of uh, renewables, then the transit stability of the system uh, improves. But um, with high penetration, uh, we can have reverse effects. Um, that is, uh, transit stability is reduced mainly due to uh, inertia. In the figure here, I'll just quickly show that uh, uh, with low penetration, which is on the horizontal axis in the figure here, okay, with moderate penetration, the uh, the critical clearing time of of the of faults is generally increased. So the likelihood that uh, a fault will have a critical clearing time which is uh, less than 200 milliseconds, for instance, is, is, is less. That is the transient of stability improves. But as you uh, move towards 50% uh, uh, penetration, the 
actually the transient angle stability of the system begins to reduce. And so the uh, critical uh, fault clearing time uh, is reduced significantly. So in a nutshell, this is uh, how the uh, present angle stability is, is, is affected. <clears throat> and now I would like to uh, move on to a small signal stability. Uh, that is the stability of the system in the small. And this is the ability of the system to maintain uh, synchronism uh, when uh, uh, due to, okay, let's say due to uh, small disturbances in the system. This could be, for instance, uh, uh, small uh, load changes, uh, regular load changes uh, that occur uh, in the system. And so <clears throat> this affects uh, small signal stability. Uh, mainly because the model characteristics of the of the system is uh, are changed, um, and so the participation of uh, certain state variables in a particular oscillation mode uh, changes due to renewables, and the overall effect of this is that, uh, for example, uh, controllers that are designed to improve uh, uh, small signal stability in the system uh, will no longer be effective uh, due to these changes in the model characteristics of the system. So this will require that the controllers are retuned uh, from time to time. But with the variability of uh, uh, renewable, renewable energy uh, generation, this will be will really be a challenge to 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 to, to match this uh, these changes. And so um, there will also be new types of uh, mods uh, which are associated with, uh, for example, uh, power electronic converters, and also the possibility for controllers, uh, let's say converter controls to interact with the other controls in the system. And here, I'll, I'll just quickly show in the figure, uh, this was for my PhD thesis, uh, where I was able to quantify the interaction uh, among uh, several uh, power system stabilizers or controllers that are designed to um, improve the small signal stability response of the system. Um, and now I'd like to focus on another issue that is uh, equally important. And this is the frequency response of the system and how it is affected by uh, renewable energy, uh, a high penetration of renewable energy in the system. And so uh, system frequency, as you know, is an indication of the balance between uh, generation and load in the system. And during a disturbance, uh, for instance, if we lose a major power plant, um, the system frequency will, will reduce. Um, and with insufficient inertia, uh, the frequency drops uh, could be very rapid, uh, uh, too rapid, uh, such that uh, the frequency will reach uh, load shedding uh, levels before uh, the controllers or the speed governors uh, basically uh, respond. In the figure here, uh, I just show that uh, the rate of change of frequency uh, following a disturbance is uh, actually depends on the available inertia. I'll show this in the next slide also, um, because uh, the main issue uh, with high penetration of uh, renewables is that uh, the system inertia is reduced, and in the figure here. Uh, the rate of change, the rate of change of frequency, which is uh, the gradient of this curve, is uh, depends on the available inertia. And so, if the inertia is low, as you can see here, the uh, the minimum frequency that is attained is much lower than that which is attained if the uh, inertia is is high. And so. The, 
the fundamental difference uh, between renewables and the uh, conventional generators is that uh, uh, for conventional generators, uh, so when the frequency drops, the speed drops, and the, the machines are able to release the kinetic energy uh, into the system in form of uh, active power. Uh, that is quite rapidly. And this assists, assists in uh, uh, mitigating the, uh, the rate of change of frequency and also the lowest uh, frequency that will be, that will result as, 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 as uh, the, uh, that will result from the disturbance. And so in this figure, we see that for a conventional generator, uh, it's able to inject uh, active power uh, quite rapidly following the disturbance. And in the, on the far right, in the figure on the far right here, I just uh, want to quickly show that, uh, for example, wind turbine generators, which are connected to the system uh, through uh, power electronic converters, are not able uh, to inject uh, kinetic energy in form of uh, active power into the system following its service. And so the black area is the conventional generator, and the red one is a wind turbine of type one, which is uh, uh, connected uh, to the system uh, uh, basically through a, through a shaft. And the other types are through power electronic uh, converters. And so we, we do not have uh, uh, much uh, initial pulse from the wind turbines. So this is, this is an issue because then uh, uh, the, the frequency would drop uh, to uh, load shedding uh, levels. And so <clears throat> to address this uh, aspect, for example, um, there's a discussion around uh, the provision of artificial inertia. And this is a control loop, an additional control loop uh, to the, for example, a wind turbine, which will enable um, then the, the wind generator to respond in a fashion that is similar uh, to conventional generators. And now I would like to quickly uh, just highlight the, the, this uh, aspect of uh, artificial inertia that uh, we could have, um, this is a derivative loop. Uh, I, don't, I will not uh, go into detail with this, but uh, we're able to take the frequency measurement and the speed measurement. And that way, we are able to influence the uh, power uh, reference of the converter, which is related to the system uh, frequency. And so we, we are able to vary the, uh, the generation in the, for example, in the wind farm. But this uh, is without, uh, uh, is not without uh, limitation, uh, because then the, the wind turbine or the wind farm must be, have the capacity to actually uh, increase its uh, uh, power production. Um, another scheme, which is a much slower scheme, is the one which uh, emulates the frequency response of a, a speed governor of a synchronous generator. And so here we, we have a, a, we have droop control, um, which is uh, similar to uh, a synchronous generator. It's actually functional control. Um, but these are just some of the uh, measures that could be taken to, to improve the frequency response. And just to summarize on this uh, aspect of uh, reduced inertia, um, they are, there's, there, basically the solution is uh, threefold. Um, and, and so we need uh, uh, system investments in form of uh, rotating masses. And this could be actually like a synchronous generator operating on no load. Um, and also, we need new technologies, uh, for, for example, in terms of uh, artificial inertia, which will allow the renewables uh, energy generation to actually inject power uh, rapidly into the system uh, following its disturbance. And also, uh, uh, the other solution is the legislative, in terms of the network codes, that there need to be the uh, clear uh, uh, requirements on the uh, minimum uh, uh, inertia that, that should be allowed in the system. 
but also there's a discussion around uh, establishing um, uh, initial markets um, that is um, in addition to uh, uh, power the balancing markets for example for example and so just to summarize uh, uh, to recap the main points of the presentation um, renewable energy is uh, <clears throat> growing uh, very fast and so there are, there will be uh, positive and negative impacts of this uh, but uh, the variation and uncertainty of the supply side uh, combined with the already existing uh, variations in the demand side uh, could be challenging and so it is uh, generally understood that uh, seamless integration requires uh, that uh, challenges associated with renewable energies are uh, fully addressed uh, uh, through technically and economically feasible uh, smart solutions. And in terms of the main concerns, uh, it's to do with uh, uh, reactive power support, that is uh, voltage management, and also how to manage the uh, reducing inertia in the system. And this Fortunately, these impacts uh, can be studied uh, using uh, the available, available tools. And I would like to just state here that uh, in multi-consult, uh, we have the possibility to carry out uh, grid impact studies uh, for both small and uh, large uh, interconnected power systems. Uh, with that, I would like to thank you.